In today's video, we're going to be looking at additional features available in a reality view. We're going to be taking a look at the update function, the placeholder function, and lastly, the attachment function. I'm gonna show you why we need these functions, how can you use them when dealing with UI, and UI that allows you to interact with 3D models that we're bringing from Reality Composer Pro. I'm also gonna show you how you can create a system, how you can create custom components, and there's gonna be a lot of features that I'm gonna show you today with Vision OS. So, let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right, guys, so today we're gonna to be adding more features to the experience that we built for Vision OS. And I'm gonna be refactoring some of this code, and I'm also going to be adding, we already have an immersive space, but I want to add a mix space, which is different to what the full is. The full means that we're, basically going into VR, mix means that we're gonna be doing a mixed reality experience. I'm also want to work on adding what's called an attachment, and an attachment is going to allow us to add sub views to a specific volumetric view. So what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and start by refactoring this code because it's gonna be really hard to maintain it if we don't do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy this area here, and then let's create a new file and this file is going to be also a Swift UI view. And this one we can call it the equipment card and then hit enter. We can just get rid of this area right here. And then the first thing that I want to pass in though is I want to pass in which Boolean is going to basically open the window for this equipment card. So this one is just gonna call var and then it's showing. And then again, it's gonna be a bool. And then I also want to get the image name from the color. So we can just say something like let toggle. This one's going to be image name and then a string. So I also need to have an actual toggle title. So I'm just gonna say toggle title. And these ones are gonna come in handy in these areas, right? So we have the image name here. This is gonna be the toggle title. So I'm gonna be passing those in but we also need to pass in a method that is going to be executing when this is set to true or when it's set to false, right? So for those, I'm gonna be doing what's called, well, not what's called, what I call open car. And this one, we're gonna be making a sync. So it's gonna say a sync, and then we can just say void. And then we can also have one for dismiss. So just say dismiss, and it's also going to be asynchronous. In this case, this might not be needed for asynchronous calls, but for the open immerse space, it's gonna be needed. So by default, it's going to be running asynchronous, even though we don't need it all the time, but it'll work with both, both different type of calls. So what I'm gonna do here for the image name, we need to say image name, and then this one here, we're gonna be replacing with is, is showing and we don't need all this title here because we're gonna be passing in the actual toggle title. So I'm just gonna say toggle and then title. We can just copy this area and we do need the hide in the show because I, I want to show that for every option. So we can just say hide whatever the title, the toggle title is gonna be and then the same thing with show. And then we can also say in here, that's gonna be for each is showing and then it looks like this looks good. And then this one is going to look for the changes on this actual property. And it looks like that looks good though. The next thing that we need to do though is I need to replace these methods, right? It's gonna be now open car. And this one is gonna be asynchronous, so we just need to do away. And then I also need to say task and make sure that I say task in here. And we can just say away and then this means car. Just gonna make it more flexible and more generic. And we get, we can also remove this preview. So that looks good to me so far. And yeah, that looks good. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and move this up in here. And that way everything is sorted and clean. Okay, let's start with the with the first one. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit refresh here as well. So that we can see this as we're making changes. So if you type in equipment area now, we should see that one that we need. So. On this first one, we're going to be needing this property. So it's gonna be so that we can toggle it. So it's gonna be the, the is showing rocket capsule. The actual title, I'm gonna be using part of this. So we can just go ahead and copy this area. And then we can just replace this with quotes. And that looks good. And then on the actual image, we can just replace it with this value. And we can just go ahead and do that. 
Then these methods, I'm gonna call them in a little different way. So it's gonna be for the open and then the one for this miss. It's gonna be typing. I just like the syntax better. It just reads better. And then that looks good to me. And we also need to do a dollar symbol because this is gonna be the bindable property. And you can see here that now things are showing, are starting to show. They don't show correct yet because we have a lot of duplicates in here, but the first thing that I need to do though is when we're opening, basically when this is set to true, we're gonna be opening the window. And then when we wanna dismiss it, we're just gonna be calling this other method. Okay, so now that we have that, why don't we just test it just to make sure that we didn't break anything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Command R. Okay, so it looks like we have it open. So no changes, but now it's using the new code. You can see that now we have our volumetric window. And if I hit Shift and, and I move my mouse, I can bring it towards me. Try that one more time. There we go. Now we can get closer in here. Everything looks good. I can hide it by pressing it. I can bring it back in. So the toggle is working. We can do the same thing with the actual rocket. And you can see that the rocket is, is coming up. And I can hit it again to toggle it. So now that we have that though, we need to add basically a new immersive space for our mix experience. So we could technically go here and we go ahead and hit refresh here so we can see the new one that we're gonna be adding. This one is going to be called mix. So I'm just gonna say mix on the image name and then we can just say it's gonna be a mix immersive. It cannot find the images yet because we haven't really added it, but I'll add it in just a minute. And then this ID here is going to be mix. And let's go ahead and add it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new group. And it's gonna be called resources. And we can just move this down. Also move assets into it. And then if I go into my finder here, should be able to go into code. And I have all the images in here already organized. We can go into images. And you can see that we also have this equipment mix rocket. It's basically ex exactly like the other one, except that I added this cube, a wireframe cube. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to assets. So let's do that and then drag it and drop it here. And then while we're here, let's go ahead and also update the icon. And I also have an icon that I already set for this. And we can probably just go here into my list view and it's gonna be taking multiple versions. So it's gonna need to take in a back. So the back is going to be basically that area. And this also was fixed. It wasn't working on the previous version of Vision OS for Xcode. And then the middle, we can just add this one right here. You can see how that one adds that rocket. And then the front, we're just gonna be adding just a little bit of, just a little tag in here. That I'm trying to remember the name of that, but basically it's just another image that is going to sit on top. So that looks good. So now if we go back into our equipment area and we let this refresh, we should see now the third car with the right information. So now we should have the three and this looks, this looks good, right? We could technically go in here and then resize it a little bit, but it's gonna look good when we go to the real running the app in the simulator. Okay, so if we go back into the Inspiration4 app, one thing that we need to do here, I'm also going to be adding our ID, so from the model. So I'm gonna say, okay, this one, this one is gonna be model the capsule reality ID. And then I also need one for the full rocket reality area ID. So this looks good. I'm also going to be injecting the environment here just in case we need that later on. And then it's just a good, good thing because I might need it. And then we also need to add a new immersive space for our mix experience. So this is basically how you do it. It's pretty easy. You just specify instead of full, it's going to be mix. And then we can just say mix in here as well. But the idea of the immersive space is gonna be different because we're creating a brand new one for the mix experience. If we go back in here to show Rocket. We can see that Rocket opens up in a mixed reality experience. And that's an issue. It looks like I didn't change the binding there. So let's go ahead and change that. You can see that this property here should be the mix rocket. And it looks like everything looks good. And now if we go back in here, we can you know bring in our volumetric view. You can see that in there. And then if we wanna do a full 
experience, you can see it, the rocket shows correctly. And if I go ahead and click it again, it goes away. And then if I wanna do a mixed reality one, so here's our mixed reality one, and all of that is looking good, I can dismiss it. There's an issue though, if I hit X, nothing closes. We still have this guy here, and we have to basically close it in order for the app to close. So that's an issue that we need to fix on the navigation. So it's gonna go ahead and hit stop. So the next thing that I need to do is let's go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna go into our areas and this is where we created our navigation stack. So if we go in here, there's a couple of things that we need to do though. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my environment and then in my environment, I'm going to be saying view model and then self because we need to basically determine if any of the immersive experiences are open and also if our capsule volumetric view is also open. So it's gonna say private var model. I also need to add something else that it's new, I haven't covered yet, and this is gonna be the scene phase. And this is gonna allow us to determine if the actual scene, the actual experience was completely closed. So if it was closed, we're gonna be able to tag, basically identify when it was closed and then close either the window or the dismissive immersive experience. Okay, so now that we have that, we can say private, and then private, and then var, and then this is gonna be just scene face. And then we also have our model, and we can say, you know, capsule reality area ID. And that should be everything that we have to do in there. Remember, this is gonna be the ID. Go ahead and test it and make sure that we didn't, I didn't break anything, right? <laughs> okay, so it looks like this is good. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. Let's go ahead and move my window there. And then I close it. The application closed. Okay, so look, looks like that works. Let's go ahead and test that with the immersive space. Go ahead and go into equipment. And then here we have our immersive space. Move it in here. And then I can go ahead and close it and the application closed and everything closed correctly. The first thing in here is that we're going to have a toggle, right? It's gonna be just a button that is going to be toggling this property is going to be displaying this information. It's gonna have a gear system image and then I made it mini and then that's basically the font size. Then I'm gonna have some explanation in here so that we can you know, display what the Dragon spacecraft is. I also made it pretty small so that we weren't taking too much space. And then I'm also going to have two different toggles that we can use to turn the light on on the actual model and also one that we can use for a system that we're going to be building that is going to allow us to orbit around the volumetric window. And then I also just added some sizing here in a background effect. The first thing that I need to do for an attachment is I need to create a new ID, and that ID is just going to identify what the attachment is going to be. So we can just say attachment ID, and then we can just call it attachment ID. It doesn't really matter what it's called. And then on the very bottom, we now need to designate, okay, what is it that we're going to be adding? What kind of attachment? So I'm gonna go back in here. I'm gonna say, it's gonna be for update. And we can also in here, just pass in the changes. So it's gonna be the changes, it's gonna be content. It's also going to have attachments. And then we don't need to have anything in here other than a print statement. So it's gonna say in this case, reality view. We can say reality view, changes detected. That way we can see that, you know, when that happens, I think it's helpful to know. And then I'm also going to have a placeholder in here. And this is complaining because you also need to pass it in here as attachments. Attachments. And then we haven't used it just yet, but we'll get back into it. So now on this one though, we need to also specify, you know, what is it that we're going to be displaying on the placeholder. So for this one, I decided to do a progress view. And there's multiple types. I'm not gonna be covering all the different types of progress views. All, all you need to know is, is that this is gonna be displaying uh, you know, a progress view whenever the view is changing or loading. 
So this one is gonna be a style. I think this one I just did it circular and then the control size in, in this one, I just made it pretty large. So that's going to allow you to display that progress bar there. And then for the attachments, we can start, you know, defining the attachments in here. It looks like our errors went away. This one is complaining because we need to also get the attachment and, and use it. So what I need to do though, is I need to also specify what the attachment is going to be. So we need to say, okay, attachment, and then you need to pass in the ID of the attachment. Well, the ID is the one on the very top. So we can just say attachment ID, and then we can use curly braces, and we need to pass in the view that is going to have the attachment. In our case, it's gonna be our capsule details. And right now it's not gonna show because we haven't really added it as a content, but at least it should work. To be able to show it though, we need to do one more thing in here. So we're gonna do if, and then let, we can say scene attachment, equal to attachments. So now we're getting into, okay, now that this is passing in all the attachment, well, this is basically behind the scenes is storing a list of attachments. Well, the attachments are defined here, but in the reality view definition, we need to determine, okay, what is the attachment so that we can add it to the content. So we're gonna say, okay, I wanna get the entity and then the entity that I wanna get is going to be the attachment ID. So now that we have this, I also want to place this correctly. So I'm gonna say scene attachment, and there's also a position property in here that we can that we can assign. And I can say scene D3, which is going to be basically a flow of three values. And it's gonna be our position X, Y, and Z. And I can say zero, negative 0 0.2, and then negative 0 0.1, and then also 0 0.1. So these are just different, a, a position that I ended up selecting that I thought look good and make sure that you do a capital on the flow. This is no unity, so <laughs> there we go. That happens after so many years of using other tools. And then I also want to set the rotation. I think I tilt it on the X axis a little bit. So we can use the seam. And then there's also a quaternion in here that we can use. And then the angle, negative 0.5. And then you can also designate what the axis is gonna be. So on the axis though, I think I ended up doing just one and then comma and then zero comma zero. So I also need to add it. So I'm just gonna say content and then the add, and then I'm going to be adding the same attachment, right? So we can hit enter. And then if everything looks good, we should be able to see it. Looks like it does look good. Let's go ahead and go a little bit closer. And there we go. So you can see the button here shows and then it also animates though. So if I select it, Looks like it's now above it. And then I can also, you know, toggle this. The values are changing. The values are changing there. I can also get closer in here if we wanted to. And then I believe if we just change this and then we go back, there we go, it'll refresh. And now it just looks, it looks better because we're in that, in that area. I'm gonna be creating a brand new folder here. And this one I'm just going to be calling, I think I just call it extensions. So we can just say extensions. And you can add extensions if you're familiar with C Sharp. In C Sharp you can add extensions. Looks like in Swift as well. You can add extensions to any type of class. In this case it's gonna be an extension to an entity. And if we go in here we can say, I'm gonna add a new file. And then the new file is gonna be a Swift file and then hit next. And in this one, we're just gonna be naming entity. And it's weird how the Apple team names extensions because they add a plus symbol. Kind of makes sense because you're adding functionality to an existing you know, implementation and an implementation that they made. So they use this syntax for naming convention. And then this one is going to be sunlight. The next thing that I need to do though is we haven't really added the lighting, the sky box. So let me go ahead and pull that. I have that in here under images. So we're gonna pull it from images and then there's a sunlight sky box that we can add into our resources. Just make sure you do copy items if needed. And if you look at it, it's a pretty simple, it's basically a black image with a white dot. Anything in black as we increase the intensity is going to light up. And then, you know, the other way around as we decrease the intensity. So I need to be able to call into light on and light off and also orbit on and orbit off. So I should be able to access the entity from the capsule reality area. 
which is the one where we need to what we need to use to be able to apply some of these changes. So we don't really have access to anything here. So, but that's okay because we do have the properties that are going to be changing. So we should be able to, from the caller, make a call and say, okay, when when this property changes, call this event. When that property changes, call this other event. So I'm going to show you how we can we can get that done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say turn on light, and then I'm going to be specifying a boy method that we're going to be calling. And then we can say the same thing with turn off light. And I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this for the orbit. So we can say, we can say turn orbit on, orbit off. And let's go ahead and add a T in there. And then what I'm gonna do though is on this one, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna call that meta, and then turn off light. And then we'll do the same thing here. Turn orbit on, and then turn orbit off. So now if we go back into the capsule reality area, you're gonna see that now this is gonna say, okay, we're missing parameters for turn on light, off, and, and so on. So we can start adding those by doing this. I can say turn off light, and then it's gonna be the code for that. I can also say, we can add a spacing here. I can also say orbit, turn on orbit, and then we can remove that, and then turn off orbit, right? So that's how we can, you know, call some of the events that are defined in the capsule details. So to turn the light on though, we can say, well, I have an entity though in here, but we don't really have access to it just yet. I'm gonna be defining a state property. It's gonna be private and then var. And we're gonna be calling this one capsule. And then the type is going to be entity and just make it nullable. And then we're gonna be setting that in here. So I'm gonna say capsule self that capsule equal the entity that we got from right above it. So now we should be able to access that capsule. So if I go in here, I'm gonna say capsule and then make sure that I check to make sure that it's not null. And then I'm gonna set it to the intensity here. Actually, it's going to be 16. And then on the turn the light off, I think I made it, actually, I think this one was 13 and I'll show you that in reality. Composer Pro because it that number is way too is way I think if I make it 16 it's going to be way way too strong and then this one right here I made it six okay so it looks like this is up and running go into equipment and then show here our volumetric view I'm gonna bring it closer to us so that we can see it I'm gonna bring my options so the light is currently off and then this is how it looks when the light is currently on off. So there's an issue that the property on the window behind it should be changing if I close this. And that's something that we can fix pretty easily by going into here and just binding to the on disappear event. So I'm gonna say on disappear. And this is something that wasn't working on the previous version of Xcode. So I'm glad that they are finally, you know, fixing some of those issues. And then I'm also going to add here, we need the environment. And then I also need the view model, view model, and then self, and then private var model. That way we can access our environment variable there. And then here I'm just gonna say rocket capsule. This one's gonna be set to false. Okay, so it looks like this is up and running. Let me make sure that this is now going to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this just to make sure. And then maybe I'll go ahead and rotate us a little bit. And then let's go ahead and just test this, make sure that everything works. And then if I close it, you can see other property that's changed. So the next thing that I wanna show you though, is I show you that the zone light here, the skybox gets applied, how it gets applied through code. We're getting this image-based light component and there's also an image-based light receiver. So how does that work in Reality Composer Pro? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Click on the scene and then go into open in Reality Composer Pro. Basically what we did through the code, it's what I'm gonna show you right now. That way you understand how it works. So I'm gonna drag and drop this Sunlight Skybox into our project. Then I'm gonna click on this capsule here and then add component. And then if you search for light, you're gonna see this image based light. I'm gonna add it and select it. It's gonna add that component to our capsule. Okay, and now if you click on add component again, I'm just gonna go ahead and search for light and I'm gonna add this image based light receiver. So right now, if I were to change this, nothing is going to change. And in fact, this image page light receiver, remember self from the code, this is how you set it in here. It's gonna be applied to the capsule. And then the environment resource that we're going to be using is going to be this, basically the sunlight skybox that we added. 
So now, right now, it's like completely dark, right? If I go closer, if I you know move it around, it's just really dark. And if I start incrementing the light here, you're gonna see how the model is going to start receiving light. All right, guys, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what systems are and how you can create a custom component. So let's first create a new group, and this one is going to be called Systems. And we can just go ahead and drag it all the way down and then go into new file here and then next. And this one I'm just gonna call Orbit System and then hit enter. Just to give you an idea of what we did, we have an Orbit component that is gonna be tracking the radius, the speed, the angle, and then whether we want to add a rotation right at the pivot point. We also have a query that is only targeting the orbit components. We also have a method or a function to be able to you know, change the orientation because we're reusing that in multiple places in here. And we're also implementing the update function so that we can iterate through each entity that is matching based on my orbit component self query. And then this is only going to happen when the system is currently rendering. And then we basically get a component if it has this, which in our case, we're gonna be doing that through our code. We're gonna be tagging some of those components such as the capsule with the orbit component. If the radius is set to zero, then we're gonna be just setting the orientation. If it's not set to zero, then we're going to basically go in a circular manner based on that radius that we are specifying. Now what we need to do though is we need to go back into our application here and we need to register some of those system and also the components. So I'm gonna say in it, and then we can say here with the curly brace, we can say we need the orbit component and then register orbit component. And I also need to register my system. So I'm just gonna say register my system. And that's cool. And this should work, nothing should break, but it's not going to do anything on the orbit because we haven't really called into it. We need to set the actual component. So I'm just gonna say capsule and then you can access the components. We can say component. And then I'm gonna say orbit component. And you can see here that this is gonna be the one that we need. And just make sure that you specify all the parameters. So the radius here, it's going to be 0.05. And then if you do comma, we also need to specify the speed. I think zero by default, it's fine until we turn it on with the, with the toggle. And then angle, it's gonna set it to zero because we're going to be basically calculating that value, access the speed in here on the turn on orbit on, and then basically increment the speed. So what I'm gonna do though is I already have a list of components, right? So I wanna know, okay, which one is the orbit component? We can say self, and then this is gonna allow us to give us the speed. So it's gonna say, okay, I want that. And then the speed is gonna be set to, to one when we're turning it on, and then we can set it to zero when we're turning this off. All right, guys, I got it up and running. Let me make sure that things are looking good. I'll bring it closer to me. And then if I select it, you can see that works. Light, it's working correctly. Let's go ahead and move it around. And you can see that, that it's also working correctly. If I turn it off, that also works. And it looks like we're orbiting at orientation and I can set it to true. And you can see that now it is rotating on its own axis as well as applying more of a, a circular rotation. And I can also change the speed here and then that will look a lot better. That's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell because that's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Thank you very much, guys.